Hello everyone, this is Nicole McWork and I am sharing a tutorial on coloring skin tones using Whiff of Joy stamps and Copic markers. For this first image, all of the images are the exact same angel stamp, Melinda reading a book, and I am using E11 for this first stamp and I'm going quickly through it just to speed through the coloring. And then I added a little bit of E13. And lastly, some E15 for even darker. And you can see the lines are pretty harsh right now where I've added the shading. Go back in a little bit there with my E13. And then I added some pink to her cheeks with R22. I usually use R20 for cheeks for lighter skin tones, but um, it didn't doesn't show up well with the darker colors, so you want to go with a little bit darker color like R22. Another thing to note when working with darker colors, you may have to go over them a little bit more than you do with lighter colors, and that goes for any Copic markers, um, just to get the blending correct. So there you see I've done her face and kind of left it lighter right there in the middle. I'm adding some color to her arm now. And I'll do the rest of the skin later. I thought I wanted to go ahead and go on to the hair. And for the hair, I started out with E25. It's just a nice brown color. And you always start out with your lightest and go to the dark, go to your darker color. You could start with your um, darker shading. I tend to usually do it this way, just because I feel like I have more control over it. I hate to start too dark and then it not be the correct color. I'm adding some shading with E27, just following the natural contours of her hair. And with all the samples here today, it's the exact same stamp and I'm coloring everything else exactly the same. It's just the skin tone and the hair that are, is different on each image. Finally, I'm going in with some E29, an even darker color, and adding some more shading and dimension to her hair. And that you can see the lines are really harsh right now. So I'm going back with my lightest color, E25, and blending that all together. And I really worked with her hair a little bit to get it the right color. going over her face again. And then I'm going to go ahead and go and work on her arm and her hand and her little foot. And I'm using the same colors as before, the E11, E13, and E15. And you can see that those lines were pretty harsh still, so I really had to Work, work those in really well to get a nice skin tone and skin coverage and get the right shading for her skin. She turned out really cute. Just adding a little bit more color and blending that in. Here's the next one I'm using and the colors that I use to, to color her in. And I'm starting out with E00. Just going to color her face all in. Next, I'm going to go in with some E11 and add a little shading. And finally, I'm going to go in with E13 for some even darker shading. And then I'll go back with my lightest color, that E00, and blend that together. And then I can work from there, adding a little bit more E11 just until you feel like you get the skin tone correct or how you want it to look. For her hair, um, I think I used, let's see, um, W2, and these are all just warm gray colors. You can kind of pick and choose when you're doing um, black hair. Um, I just picked the colors I had on hand. So I did W2 first, and then I believe W5, 
which is warm gray number five. And I'm just adding a little bit darker shading there. And you can see it, her hair kind of looks funny, I think, with just these lighter gray colors. But it really helps build the dimension. And then I bit, went back with um, the warm gray number seven. And once you get that darker gray in there, it really starts making the hair look more black. I, I never go and use the black Copic marker to create the black hair. I just, that's not a real good look. This looks more natural when you go with the shades of gray. Then I'm going to go back with my lightest, the, the warm gray number two, and shade that all in and blend it really good. And I really worked and worked and worked with the grays. They can be a little bit tricky. I still, that doesn't look very good to my eye. It looked pretty choppy. So went over it several times to get the, the right coloring for her hair. And I felt her face still needed a little bit more work. And then I added some R20 blush to her cheeks. Added just a little bit more dark there and going back with the E00 and the E11 to work that. And you can see the two that I've done already side by side. And the great thing about Copic markers is if you feel like they aren't um, blended quite right, you can go over them as many times as you need to. Finally, my last sample, I'm starting out with E000. And then I go to E00 to add some shading, and finally E11 for that even darker shading. And then I'll go back over that with the E000 to blend it all out, and R20 for the cheeks. For the hair, I did um, a blonde hair just for a lot of contrast. You could, just like with any hair, you can do all kinds of different shades, but this is just an easy blonde where I used Y11, and then I took Y28. It kind of does a, what you might call a, a dirty blonde, and just going in and adding the shading, following the lines of the stamp. And with these colors, you need to work them in pretty good too, because that Y11 is not a natural uh, blonde look. It's pretty yellow. So that Y28 really helps uh, add the shading and dimension and give the hair a nice look. Still working that out there a little bit. And now you'll be able to see all three images side by side and see how um, they're a bit different and still the same. And I, like I said, you can always go back over them as many times as you want if you feel like something isn't quite right. I went over mine several times. For her shirt, I used the colors there, and then these are for the pants and for her accessories. That was for the grass and the flowers. These are, these are the colors I used. And then these last colors are for, oh, um, her book. And then I masked it off and added a text background and some distress ink. And then when I peeled the masks off, this is what they looked like. And then I just simply finished the card. I used this background stamp and another background stamp and a little ribbon and embellishment. And here is what each card looks like completed. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit the Whiff of Joy blog at the address at the end of this video or my personal blog and the address is also listed here. Thanks for watching.